Hey guys, it's your boy Wings of Redemption, and I'm back, and I sound like Junkyard today because um, we're doing podcast, Painkiller Already, Episode 4. Who do we have with us today? Kyle! Oh no! <laughs> this is Woody. And our guest? And uh, this, is, this is Bash. Welcome Hi, to the Bash podcast, TV. Bash. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor. <laughs> Very good. Does anyone want to go with the first topic, or do you want me to throw it out? I'll go with it. Go ahead. How the hell did you get the name Bash? <laughs> Bash. Well, my real name is Bashir, so a lot of people, a lot of my friends call me Bash, so I just ran with that. Bashir, nice. like is that your first name or your last name? That's my first name. Oh, because I'm, I'm thinking of the hockey player, Donald Bashir. I don't think of a nerd. Yeah, his I'm is, thinking of Star Trek his, Deep Space Nine. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. I'm more I'm more along the lines of Deep Space Nine because I don't have an R in the middle of my name. I have an R only at the end. Oh, okay. Yep. Right. And you yeah. both you just both out nerded me. I had never seen Deep Space Nine. I ne- I never could do, I could never follow <laughs> spinoff shows like Deep Space Nine, it's Voyager, a, or um, all right. well, Voyager was good, man. You had Janeway. She was a, she was like the first female Star Trek Wait captain. She was, I was with you through Deep Space Nine, but Janeway. And that little midget guy, like the Ferengi person, like who the cook? Neelix. No, Neelix is the man. He cooked. He had that mohawk thing, and he had that little midget girlfriend. Neelix is who the was, woman who was at old. best. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> you had a black Vulcan in there. That was Hence great. He was cooking. the first black Vulcan. <laughs> hey, next generation and the original. That was all that that consists in the Star Trek universe to me. Uh, you know what? If, right. it didn't, missing- if it didn't have at least a crappy made-for-TV spinoff movie. I weren't interested. I'll say two things. You missed out on something with Deep Space Nine. And if you haven't seen the new Star Trek movie, which didn't seem to fit that criteria, you really missed out because that was great. You know, oh, I've I, I made the first 10 minutes of the new Star Trek movie because, you know, um, Jay. The first 10 minutes was badass. What? Have you been with a Mustang driving across the cliff for no fucking no, reason? That was like 30 minutes in. If I recall, the first 10 minutes was. Um, <laughs> yeah. That, That's that the, battle the guy, at the beginning. The He's battle dead. at the beginning that his father fought, exactly. He crashes. Yeah, that was... I love any movie where at the end the guy's like, fuck it, and he like drives a, a ship into something. He's like, all right, they're going <laughs> you, down. Yeah, where... you can't go That's wrong. What... Yeah, you but see, what... that was oh. Nemesis. <laughs> We're going to go super nerd mode on this podcast. We're going to talk about some Star Trek, I guess. Let me tell you, <laughs> this, is why, this is why Captain Kirk was a badass. When shit went down... He was going to set that thing to self-destruct. He didn't care. He must have done that like 10 different times. <laughs> if I'm Scotty, I'm like, fuck it, blow it up. Because he's setting that thing to self-destruct every other episode. <laughs> that or he's going to like crash it into something. If you come on board his ship and you fuck with him, he's like, all right, we're all going down. Then. I don't care. <laughs> Blowing up in five minutes. I remember yeah. we were fighting against these people one time who, who, who were like half black, half white. And I don't mean racially. I mean like they were split down the middle vertically. <laughs> Left side was was like white painted, right side was black painted, and like those people wanted to take over ships. So he's like, "All right, self destruct mode." And the timer's <laughs> ticking down, and the alien's like, "Are you fucking crazy?" And he's like, "I don't care. We're all gonna die now." <laughs> he just didn't give a shit, and and he like he didn't care. He was gonna get in a fist fight. He was gonna fuck a green woman. He was the man. <laughs> <laughs> you appear to be a badass. Picard was like the thinking's man Star Trek captain, but Kirk was just a badass. The only thing that got me with Picard is Data did most of his fucking work. I, I, well, I mean, you got to think of Data like as as, as Picard's iPhone. I mean, if Picard he's, not, a, he's not really a person. If he was a better thinker, he'd leverage Q a little bit more. You know, he's running into trouble. He could have said, hey, Q, fix this stuff for me and, uh, and why, be good to go. Did, why did Picard need a second officer? I mean, I guess you could say Leonard Nimoy was, you know, Shatner's second officer, but he did. He had a whole different job. He was like yeah, he was a science officer. Yeah, he was a science. Officer. Why did Picard need like a second chair? He, you know he what I'm going to say? Ship. I'm going to throw this out there. If you gave me four weeks, I could grow a beard at least as good as that guy. Oh, what Brent Spinner? That guy had a badass beard. I can no, do Brent that. Brent Spinner was Data. You're oh, was he? John, was a... You're talking about Jonathan Freaks. I don't Jonathan know. Frank the guy's Frank. number one. That's who I'm talking about. Yeah, Jonathan yeah. one. I Prince grew up here like data. that. I can get See. that done. And Hutch, don't make me show you. <laughs> I go a beard <laughs> if my wife lets me. 
Son, I outbeard all of you. I grow full oh. beard in sleep. Oh. <laughs> I saw your beard, man. It's like the Abe Lincoln thing you had cooking. Yeah, that was like three days old. <laughs> no. Wow. I'm serious. I, I got more back hair than some people have hair Whoa. on their bodies. Whoa, but... <laughs> TMI. Uh, I'm just a hairy beast. My chest, I got chest hair. It looks like a forest. Um, All right. So but, moving on. Yeah, new topic. <laughs> hey, did you guys see the new map pack was uh, announced for uh, Modern Warfare 2? Yeah, I called it in between yeah, like, haters' comments. Can't wait. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it comes out pretty soon. Let me let me check it. I, I kept the page up, so it won't be long. June 3rd. Is it yeah, June, June 3rd? Yeah. It's, and up soon. it's the same deal. There's uh, five maps, and it's 15 bucks again, so three bucks a map, which I know everyone's yeah. going to go crazy over. But for me, it's still one of the cheaper things I do in gaming. You know, in, in terms of dollars per hour, I spent a lot more on um, Bioshock or Heavy Rain or one of those games I play through and stop than I did on any of the map packs. But uh, I'm not that excited for the map pack because... Uh, um, how do I phrase this? Modern Warfare 2 is a piece of shit. So it's like uh, I don't. I, I just I just could not care less. They might as well come out ma- come out with map packs for Mario Brothers. If they came out with a, a Mario Brothers map pack, I would buy that before I bought the Modern Warfare 2 map pack. Kyle's interested in the Pac Man expansion pack. You get, yeah, something like that. That shit is. <laughs> shit, man. I'll buy anything before I buy a, a Modern Warfare 2 map pack. Really? I'll pick it up. I get enough time out of that game even now. Well, actually, right now I'm only playing Beta Reach. And, and I, you know, playing Reach has made me sort of understand how much more Bungie does for the community than Infinity yep. Ward. I mean, their yeah, beta I, has more online support than Modern Warfare 2 does. Yeah, you got that right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, Infinity Ward's the, horrible, too. The fact that they put two new maps into the beta, yeah. that's more support than Infinity Ward did in the last nine months. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Like it, hey, uh, Bungie will put more maps into Halo Reach than Infinity Ward will put into their last two games. That's that's the kind of bullshit we deal with with those people. They really will. Because what we get, we got like what four maps on uh, COD Four, and we're probably going to get like a total of. I don't count those rehashed maps. Eight as, maps. Uh, Mister, as fucking Doctor Evil Junior. Robert Bowling likes to call them, but six maps on Modern <laughs> Warfare Two. Yeah. yeah, even Treyarch outshines. Treyarch what is, put sixteen. What do you call them? Rehash maps. Yeah. Huh. What's what's rehashed about them? They look exactly the same. Well, they got different stuff in them. Like the bike shop has more detail on the walls, like more bike tires. No. Like in Crash, there's like radios oh. and shit laying around the hallways. I actually wonder so just how visual much detail time they maybe. saved by using existing maps. Like uh, I, a I, lot I, because uh, they, you still get under the uh, overgrown. Think of it like this, all right? Think of this. Really? When, think of building a map the same way you would build a house, all right? When they built, like, salvage, they had to pour a foundation. They had, all right, they needed an architect. They needed to, like, level the ground. They needed to pour a foundation, put up the walls, the roofing, plumbing, all that good stuff. With these, with, like, overgrown, they just had to repaint the house. See, now, I actually like your analogy, but I'm not sure I agree with it. Here's the deal. With, um, uh, with the new maps... There's a new engine involved. There's new detailing. There's new, like, the, the way that they build them and the way that they react, the glass reacts, the cars react, all that stuff. I would bet that your equivalent to the house thing is they had to pour the foundation, they had to put in the walls, they had to put in the curtains, they had to do the rugs, the whole thing. And what they saved was the architecture work. The, I don't you know, think so. I don't well, think so. No, no, no. I, I, I've been playing COD 4 and Modern Warfare 2 exclusively. In Free For All, the spawn is 100% the exact same. Yeah. The only difference is instead of a car on the left hand side, there's a truck now. That that's for the environment. There is no glass in Crash or Overgrown. So, so they, but I, I think because it's a new engine, they actually had to retype and redrag and redo everything. They just didn't I, have to redesign it. I think it was as simple as dragging and dropping the the old map into their new uh, into their new engine. I I. I I mean, I could be completely wrong. You know more about it than I do, but just 
I uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, pa- put it past Infinity Ward to just take the easiest way uh, easiest way uh, out. You know, the so path I, of least resistance. Hey, left. the fact that you can still get under overgrown <laughs> yeah, says something. It does. Yeah, that's, that does say something. Saying, By the way, the link I sent you guys is the reason I like Star Trek Voyager. Yeah, I'm thinking about checking it out now myself. <laughs> All right, guys. So he sent a link <laughs> of seven of nine in this bodysuit. And uh, except for the freaky stuff on her hand and eye, she uh, uh, she appears oh, to be good shape. She got both hand Jerry, lights on. That's that's yeah, she does. That's Jerry Ryan, and she exclusively wore a one piece leotard throughout the entire show, and she is stacked. And uh, if you guys ever watched that show that was on Fox called Boston Public, she was the hot ass blonde teacher. It was on for about three uh. years. But yeah, you're right. I remember that. She's got this metal implants on her body, and she's got like one that's like framing her eyebrow, and she's got one that's on her left hand. And you gotta wonder where the rest of them are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I wasn't a really big Next Generation watcher, mm-hmm. but I watched First Contact. I watched most, I, almost all the movies. I think I don't think I've seen Insurrection. And um, Picard hates the Borg, like you know Shatner hates the Klingons. How yep. did they get along? How did who get along? No. Uh, this was Voyager. She was on. She was on. The oh, she was on Game Voyager. Board. She wasn't on Next Generation. No, right. she wasn't on Next Generation. Because I, I remember Picard hated the Borg, but I don't think he was prejudiced against them. I bet if he met a nice Borg, he'd get along with that guy. I don't think so. Did Picard <laughs> ever get in a fist fight? Um, yeah, I'm sure he has. I'm trying to think back. I've I've literally seen every episode, so. Now, let's just get one thing straight, because I know there's probably, you know, 10, 20, I don't know how many viewers we have on this thing now. I'm not a, I'm not one of those <laughs> Trekkies, okay? I'm not one of those Trekkies. I'm not one of those guys who has a Star Trek uniform in the closet, puts it on, and hangs out with his buddies or anything. Let's let's just get that straight now. I just enjoy <laughs> the television show. I used to watch it as a child with my father, so it's ingrained in my personality. Just wanted to get that out there, but I so love you're the show. saying you're loyal to your Star Wars, and, and you're only going to have the Stormtrooper uniform and no others? Oh fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what actually ran through my mind when you were talking about that was you in Walmart in a Star Trek uniform with a gun. Oh, I'd have to have a phaser if I'm in Star Trek. I, <laughs> you Star know what? Trek, you know. I want to call that the "oh fuck off" thing. We have had so many subs who don't understand like friendships and relationships and guys joking around. How many? Because those kids don't have fucking real friends in life. Like, I don't get this. These people are, like, a, a certain kind of emotionally retarded. That's what I wanted to talk about that I couldn't remember. Oh, I'm glad really? you brought it up. I've been trying to remember what I wanted to bring on this podcast forever. Go ahead and finish your point. I want to hit on it, too. It's baffled me how they don't see, like, you know, when I tease you about how you were afraid to face me in Civilization's Revolution, that they don't see, like, the fun in that and that we get along. Or um, I, I did a dual commentary with um, FPS Russia. And they think that guy's gonna kill me. They're, they're, they're like, you know, good thing you have that gun. It, it's yeah. Nobody can, nobody can joke around. They think you're so, so serious about everything. And like, they'll, I mean, they, they hear somebody call somebody a douche, and they're like, oh, Hutch hates that guy. Let me go to his page and flame him now. It's, I mean, that's. <laughs> let me, let me just say this. All right, the majority of, I myself am twenty. I just turned twenty four years old. The majority of the people that I play with and that I hang out with on, you know. YouTube and Skype and stuff are around my age or older. We, I don't know how to say this. We're most of us are grown men. So if we have a slight disagreement about a video game, that doesn't mean we want 20,000, 14 year olds to jump in on our side. I don't need that guys. <laughs> and most of the time we're just joking around anyway. If you yeah. tell somebody to go fuck, if I, if you hear me tell Woody to go fuck himself, I'm not serious. Yeah. Kyle and I were <laughs> laughing through that whole Civ Rev game. And I know probably 98% of the people who watched the, the, like, you know, back and forth leading up to it uh, understood that, uh, like, we were friends and we were getting along. But there was a vocal minority who really thought, you know, that there was a severe disagreement over civilization's revolution. And uh, Oh, my God. I was getting these comments on my page. They're like, oh, you, you like – you showed that faggot Woody, man. You you made him eat his words. I'm like, are you kidding? Woody's got two kids. How's he homosexual? <laughs> yeah. Maybe they don't understand how it works. You had the birds and the bees conversation at your house? <laughs> Dude, I don't even want to get started with those people. But, uh, but yeah, just understand, you know. Like, 
most of us in the YouTube community get along with each other, and if, if we say something, we don't need you know, 40,000 people yelling, fight, fight, fight. To, uh, I mean, to there's only things. there's only two people, um, two people on YouTube that I hate, and I mean I would never bring them up because I don't like those those silly little flame wars. Because basically, what you're doing when you start those, you're trying to rally your troop of children to fight on your side. And what kind of what kind of reasonable adult human being would do that? I don't get it. You know, let's see, my group of children are mentally retarded. This guy just spelled legend L E N G E N D. The legend. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's Italian. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he's Italian. You know, who knows? <laughs> Sebastian, I'm still looking at this too. All right, I'm gonna look at. I'm gonna try to find some nude photos of Jerry Ryan. You guys change topics oh, or whatever. Sebastian, <laughs> <laughs> do you have subscribers who appear to be emotionally retarded? Uh, <laughs> I don't have enough subscribers for me to call my subscribers emotionally retarded right now, but <laughs> I'll go ahead and say that um I do I definitely I, I do keep keep an eye on you know the the comment boxes that you guys have and it's sometimes it's just ridiculous what I see man and I guess I guess you just got to understand that some people just don't get it you know what I mean some of these people that a lot of the people that we cater to are under the age of fifteen you know what I mean so. They just they just don't get it right yeah. now. You know, they I have it developmental. I like my subs, and um, I appreciate that the bulk of my subs treat me really well. Like uh, you know, one thing that I'm kind of proud of is um, I have three videos on Machinima, only three, and Machinima has like 1,600 videos total. And in terms of how highly they're rated, I have, if I recall, like one, two, and eight all time. And it's not because my videos are the best that's ever been on Machinima. It's because my subscribers are the best, and and I appreciate them for that. But there's a couple out there who don't understand joking, and uh, that's you know, I've seen that recently. So. Yeah, this this pending approval stuff rocks. This one kid said, "Why no commentary?" Like twelve times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I th- in that case, the pending approval, like when you do a duel with FPS Russian, one of the uh, things he used to do is he'd ask you to make the comments pending approval. And uh, so I, I've seen that too, and I think it confuses people because I got more duplicate comments on that one video than I did all my others combined. I saw that he was doing that, and I was like, "Why would you do that? You got to go through every comment and approve it." And he's like, "It makes all of it, it shuts up all the people that are gonna hate on me." And I'm like, "You know, you're right. I've started doing it too. I do it on every single video." Yeah, I'm gonna start doing mm-hmm. it myself. I'm just gonna block all the haters, and the only people that'll see the hate is me. It's yeah. a good idea. These kids are douches. Who are these kids who make these Photoshop fake pictures of celebrities nude? Now I have to like inspect the photo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't I know if this is real or not. That's not real. I don't That's know. A hot chick, they put her head on though. Now is this Jerry Ryan chick? Is she uh, is she a la carte or is she natural? She's natural, I think. I don't. I don't. I don't think that that's natural, dude. I you mean, see this how looks like cool. basketballs here. I'm looking at. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing. They're, they're high. They're riding a little high, man. They don't look all natural to me. I mean, I'm, it, it looks like they're holding up, holding their own. Gravity ain't like got nothing on them. That, if yeah, you that's can what I'm touch saying. something, it is real. End of discussion. <laughs> <laughs> no, we ain't saying it's not real. There's a difference between real and not natural, though. There's no. I mean, you know, you could be real but not natural. All right. Those aren't natural. Those are supernatural. That's the end of the story. <laughs> All right. You went on that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who knows what time the call started before we get too deep into it? Was it, was it 15 like, minutes uh, 10, in? 10, 20, somewhere around there. Oh, so we're 25 minutes in, you think? Yeah, about 25 minutes in when we started the conversation. All right. So, so let's let's do um, some more. Day. Hey, I have this. Uh, here's the deal. Two podcasts ago. I had what someone called a cool story bro, which is actually an insult, meaning like a boring story. <laughs> but I think by and large it was well received. So I'm going to let our guest choose which cool story I choose. Um, the first time the police brought me home, my high school suicide attempt, how I got thrown out of the dorms and met my wife, or the one that Wings wanted my career path. You know, I, um, I, I'm thinking about that second one. I'll let you hear that second one. <laughs> Well, um, it's funny because cause I'm actually in the IT industry, so your career path actually is interesting to me, but I really want to hear about that suicide attempt. <laughs> I got to say. <laughs> All right. All right, so let's throw it down. Um, it starts off with kind of a high point in my high school. I was 17. I had a hot girlfriend, and I had a 
a car that I thought was cool, a Volkswagen GTI. It was only two years old. And um, uh, everything kind of went wrong when I crashed it. I was I was up late with her. Nothing really interesting happened, I promise you. But I was up late with her, and then um, I was racing racing bikes at the time, like bicycles, the road racing, quarter fronts kind of thing, but one day. And uh, I had to prep the bike for it. I drove up to Pennsylvania for the race, uh, and on the drive home, I fell asleep and crashed my car. And uh, that's when everything kind of went south. Everything sort of hit me at once. So I had bad grades in high school, and uh, the kind of father I had was um, – he uh, he would lay it down. He didn't really tell anything kind of softly. And the future he was painting for me, and this was his motivational tactic, was really, really bleak, as if it was an unrecoverable situation. So um, so I mentioned in, in a podcast or two ago that I had a 1.98 GPA when I graduated, and that was after I pulled it up my senior year. And I might have been like a 1.6 at the time. And um, uh, so I felt like I had no future. I had crashed my car. I had broken my arm, and my girlfriend had dumped me, which I think might have been related to the car thing. And uh, everything just looked like it wasn't worth finishing. Like, I was like, man, this this, this stuff's not, it's not turning around for me. And um, uh, so, so the tactic I took on the, uh, the suicide attempt was hanging myself. What I did is I grabbed a, um, a dog leash, and uh, I looped it through itself so that it would sort of tighten like a noose. And then I hooked a little clip that would go on the collar to a skylight in the bathroom. And um, uh, so I hooked the clip on, and I, uh, I stood on a chair like so that I could hook the clip on, and I kicked it out from under me. And uh, I hung there for probably, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds or so. And, uh, um, and then the, the skylight broke. It was the piece that you would use the, um, that made it sort of go up and down so you could open the skylight. And it pulled off after like 15 or 20 seconds, and I just sort of fell to the ground and sat there, and it was like, fuck, that didn't work either. And um, are you sure? Th- are you sure that this wasn't a David Carradine type situation? <laughs> if you guys don't know, he uh, this is a guy who enjoyed masturbating and choking himself at the same time. So that's the autoerotic <laughs> asphyxiation. <laughs> David Carradine, who was the actor from Kung Fu and Bill from Kill Bill, this is how the man died. He was hanging himself, you know, to, uh, well, I, I won't go into great detail, but he was hanging himself while masturbating to enjoy the experience more. And uh, like many uh, people who do that, he killed himself accidentally. And was, and you can imagine how they found him hanging <laughs> naked with his hand on his penis. Worst death ever. Best death <laughs> ever? You got a yeah, better way to go? Question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's old ways. <laughs> yeah. So, um, um. Anyway, after that, like, sort of the the successor, the, the the finish of that story there is, um, I just I didn't really try again. Although I was kind of depressed, my sleep schedule was wrecked, and um, uh, I don't that, know what happened. I got a question. Go ahead. How the how the straight shooting father take the broken skylight? <laughs> they didn't know. They didn't know for years. I actually told him about it probably when I was in my mid twenties. So I, it was seventeen when I did it, and uh, they're like, "Oh, you know." But but they knew that um, that I was depressed. They just didn't know how to deal with it. They didn't know how to like provide a support system and, and to help me kick it. And um, I, I really think what pulled me out of it was springtime rolled around. And um, oh, you know what was really cool? So um, so my father always made me work. So I, didn't, I got my first job when I was, like, 13. And uh, just briefly, this job, I would wake up at, like, 4 a.m. in the morning and rent out bicycles, which was, like, 10% dealing with customers and 90% dipping steel wool in this kerosene oil, like, mixture that he called bike juice and rubbing the rust off the bicycle spokes in the, in the sun. So that was me at 13. And... Uh, um, so that was the kind of dad I had. He always liked me working. He always liked me, you know, having jobs and employment and, and being fruitful, even though I didn't do well in high school. And uh, that summer when I had a broken arm because of the car crash, I uh, I couldn't work. I couldn't get hired anywhere. And uh, it was awesome. It was the first time I had, like, a fully savaged hand. And uh, I spent all my time at the beach and uh, got in good shape. And, and I used to date girls, like, serially. So... So when you're in um, a regular town, if you, like, ask a girl out or, you know, you date her for a week and you're a total jackass, 
then that's on your permanent record. But if you live in a beach town, you get 200,000 new women every week. Every week. You can be anything. I, I saw the movie um, with Julia Roberts where she plays a, a prostitute. Help me here. Pretty Woman. Pretty, Pretty Woman. woman. I saw that movie like 25 times that summer. I would take girls to that movie and then and they'd kiss them under the boardwalk like every opportunity I got. And um, and that was what pulled me out of my depression. Woody's wife does not listen to the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I was about to ask, did you pull the same move on the wife? No, no. Hey, that, that I've got a, a pretty interesting story from when I met her too, maybe another podcast. <laughs> What, what, did you take her to Pretty Woman and kiss her under the boardwalk? No, it's a whole new story. It has to me. It has to do with me nearly getting thrown out of college and doing community service. But we'll leave it for another one. You you were just a you were just a bad kid, eh, man? You know, like, you, I was like a some... really nice kid. I wore sweaters with collars underneath them, and like got away with a lot more than my leather jacketed brethren. <laughs> but your hearts were the same though that's the thing. <laughs> uh, but not in like a nasty way like i was never a, a nasty person like I, I didn't beat up people smaller than me or anything like that but uh in terms of like playing hooky and uh i had a motorcycle in high school and if i wasn't going double the speed limit i thought i wasn't doing it right and so if it was 55 i go 110 if it was like a 25 in urban streets i'm going 50 and uh that was my goal <laughs> I'm like passing between cars on uphill corners thinking that double yellow line is like the motorcycle lane. That was, <laughs> <laughs> that was me in high school. <laughs> so, so, hey, um, my exciting parts of high school was getting, a, getting accepted in a Dungeons and Dragons group. <laughs> but, <laughs> all right, well, look, moving on, moving on. Right, we're, oh, my God. I can't believe you said that. My, <laughs> <laughs> that just happened. Wow. Wow. Um, I guess uh, I guess my ex- most exciting moment in high school was um, I was kind of a uh, I would pretty I would I wasn't really afraid of anything and I would do pretty much anything and uh, my we were doing this thing one day there was this rap song and I don't even remember who sings it somebody maybe somebody in the podcast can help me out but at one point in the song the guy's like he says something to the nature of yeah I Donkey Kong them bitches and the other guy's like what the hell's that and he's like. You hit them in the top of the head. That way, the popo don't 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 see no bruise. And so we thought that was really funny. You know, Donkey Kong and somebody in the head. Basically, you make a fist and you hit them with the bottom of your fist, like you would you know put hit your fist on a table. And so we were seniors. So as the freshmen walk by, we Donkey Kong them. We pop them in the top of the head just for the hell of it. See, that's and, what uh, I didn't do. I never beat up little kids. You jackass. No, no, no. We get the good part. <laughs> see, I, I, I'd have so, a handful of dicks. Somebody did that to me. All right, so <laughs> did you? You gotta, you did you gotta just, send yourself, man. I'm gonna take some GFX Lab is gonna fuck you off. <laughs> did you just say that? I can just see a rap hey, song. I yeah, got a hey, handful of dick. Got a handful of dick. Handful of dick, handful of dick, handful of dick. Hey, when I when I was up in high school, and that was the number one way to take a guy down. You grab that shit and you twist. Oh man, All right, they, taught me, to, they taught that shit to the girls in uh, in that that phys ed class they always had for the girls. <laughs> Hey, that would take Rap a football twist. player down to his knees. Oh, wait, wait, Kyle's in his story. So, Kyle, <laughs> you're ruthlessly this, hitting little kids right, in the so back of the head. The, we'd been hitting the freshmen or whatever, and so we were in class, and we're in wood shop, and the class was about to start, and I was telling my buddy, I was like, I don't give a shit. I'll hit anybody. And they're like, I bet you won't hit Mr. Cawthon. Mr. Cawthon is our wood shop teacher. He's six foot four. And I'm like, I don't give a shit. I'll hit him. And they're like, do it. I fucking dare you. I'm like, all right. So we're, he's standing at his podium. We're all standing around, He's and he's like, well, today we're going to build some birdhouses, and we're going to learn to do some masonry work. And Myers, what are you going to do today? And I went, Donkey Kong, bitch. And I hit him in the top of the head. And he was so <laughs> taken back by that. He just kind of like, he was just like, ah, and like <laughs> turned red. And I thought he was going to hit me, but he just like drug me to the office. I was, I was like, what a pussy. You would take me to the office. Why don't you just punch me? <laughs> I, but I hit the teacher in the top of the head and got suspended for two days. And the best part is, like, he knew my dad, so like, I, I would see him like outside of school when we would go, uh, we would go shoot shotguns and stuff. Oh man, Mr. Coffin, I saw All him right. about two years ago. It was, it was uh, kind of awkward. Wings, don't you have a suicide story? Someone you know? Oh, I want to talk about that one. Oh, that's okay. All right, I'll respect that. I'll take it back. I was going to insist, but. Good enough. 
<laughs> suicide can be a pretty touchy subject. I remember one time in high school, like a, a guy broke up with this girl, and um, she asked to go to the bathroom. And when she came back, she had cut her wrist in the bathroom, and he was in the class with her. And she comes back into the into the classroom. Look what you made me do! Look what you uh, made me yeah, do! Yeah, see, my suicide story actually succeeded. Oh, that's. <laughs> Oh, that that ain't cool. Well, I, mine was just as disturbing. If you if you've ever seen a fifteen year old girl walk into a classroom bleeding profusely, screaming, "Look what you made me do!" Uh, that's terrifying. Yeah. But the question I, is, was it vertically or horizontally? <laughs> saying because... did she cross the street or she go down the highway? That's <laughs> up. I don't know why people cut their wrists anyway. I don't know why you wouldn't shoot yourself in the head, man. Yeah, usually they do it for attention a lot of the time. That's why. Yeah, that's I was why gonna they say sick. that. I was gonna like weird um, like, as a point of pride. When you do it silently in some room when everyone's sleeping, you're not doing it for attention. When you cut your wrist and run back into class and tell everyone to look at it, that's a crime yeah. for attention. Exactly. Well, see, well, see if, these, if these broads were smart, they'd get some homeopathic fucking like sleep aids and they'd eat the whole bottle in front of somebody. Most people are dumb as shit. You ain't going to overdose on homeopathic drugs. <laughs> I was about to say that. I was like, aren't they 99% water? Yeah, <laughs> but see, most people are dumb as shit. They won't. They be like, "Oh my god, you just swallowed a bottle of sleeping pills." You know. <laughs> I had a roommate who tried to kill himself every week. It was uh, it was freaking. What brutal. a failure! <laughs> yeah, that that is pretty bad. <laughs> so um, yeah, but like they okay, so they weren't all serious attempts, but the guy was really not right. Um, he wasn't actually my roommate. We uh, we both rented out bedrooms on this house. So I guess a woman wanted help with her mortgage, and she rented out bedrooms to college kids and uh he and uh-huh. i you know, just like almost shared a door the rooms were so close and there was only two of us renting and uh he would od on drugs and then he'd call them like his mom and be like it's over now you know this is gonna be it i miss you and uh i called 911 i called 911 enough that i got to know the paramedics it was like joe wow. hey <laughs> sean did it again wow. and what's uh, up big mike uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and then there were other like weird things he did. Like remember he took a first aid kit and he was smashing it on the bathroom mirror. And uh, so I went in there and I'm like, dude, you know, you got to settle down. This is you know, not normal behavior. And he later admitted that like in his head he was going to break the mirror and a uh, piece of glass would cut his jugular. Now of course that's not a, a realistic plan, but that's what he had cooking in his mind when he was doing it. Why did he pick the glass up? You he know, didn't break it. It was a plastic first aid kit. And he was just sort of smashing it when I uh, you know, went over and helped him out. You know, all, all this goes to my mind. What the hell was the lady that needed the help with the house payment doing when he was trying to break a bathroom mirror? Yeah, the more important story home. that I want to hear is what was Woody doing with the lady who was renting the house out to him? Because I just imagine some kind of was, weird scenario. You know, when I rented <laughs> the room, I was like, yeah. You know, like it, even if it doesn't turn romantic, at least it would be like someone cool and maybe she'll have friends. Because she wasn't that much older than me. She was probably like 22 or Nice, but uh, it turns out she was gay and uh, not down. Oh, <laughs> yeah. trust me, Woody. See, you what... can, uh, I, you, you can turn him back. <laughs> That's what Dan <laughs> Savage okay. says. It was okay when you said she was gay. When I was like, you can work with that. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't work with it. I don't know. Maybe you have more. I don't know. You got there's different levels of gay. I mean, th- when they when they already look like the boy. <laughs> you might not be able to turn them back. I've I've seen like some females that go so deep into like looking like a boy they'll start talking like them. Yeah. Like I I worked with this one girl. You could not even tell it was a girl. I like got surprised when they walking in her on the bathroom and she had tits. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> this one was pretty enough, but she had um you know when girls have those beads like braided into their hair when they go to the Caribbean. Yeah. yeah. She had that going on all the time. It's not my. Yeah. Favorite. It's, yeah, not really. Oh, she's one of those grassroots people. Yes, absolutely. It's all with the movement and stuff. Granola. Yeah. Uh, oh, speak, get, speaking of bitches, I've seen this movie called The Teeth yeah, <laughs> earlier. <laughs> Y'all ever seen Teeth yet? Yeah. All right, hang on one second. While you talk about Teeth, I'm going to go to the bathroom, and hopefully you're done talking about Teeth. <laughs> oh, you want to be here for this one, Kyle. You want to be no, here. No, I don't. <laughs> I've seen the movie. I know. I'll be you right see? back. No. <laughs> All right, I want to be here. Tell me about Teeth. Well, there's this uh, movie about it. Teeth, and it's basically about a girl named Dawn. And um, Dawn is, like, really, really, you know, pro, you know, pro uh, abstinence. She wants to save herself from marriage, so much so that her body evolves. 
and her vagina grows teeth. What? Are you kidding me? That's Who not made... good. <laughs> That's I can't not even believe like. somebody would make that. Who funded the movie, though? <laughs> <laughs> I watched that movie earlier. And I'm like, man, this movie kicks ass. What? <laughs> so you're into that? I mean, it, it, I'm not into the vagina with teeth, but I don't know. It's, getting it's, that it's vibe. A cool concept because he, cause she had like these boyfriends. She had like a really clean cut boyfriend, and she, and like his friend always hit on her, and he like tried to get his hand down her pants. He comes back without his fingers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and it turns out in the movie. Spoiler alert! <laughs> Turns out in the movie, the boyfriend that was all lovey dovey with her, the one who's like, "Yeah, I'll save myself for marriage," actually had a bet with his other friend that he would score with her first. And so he lost his dick. Yeah, you know, he lost his dick. Yeah, because <laughs> they <laughs> fucked one time and she, and she was in with it, and then they fucked the second time, and he told her about the bet while he was fucking her, and she got all mad. <laughs> and she bit him. Yeah, it's like, oh man. Oh. My goodness. <laughs> Didn't the dog eat it? I remember seeing that. No, that's that was a, that was like her stepbrother. Oh my god. How many times did she almost get raped? <laughs> oh, she she turned maniacal toward the end of it and just started fucking people she wanted to kill. Oh my. I'm reading about this right now. It's actually it's actually a real thing called vagina dentata. That's awesome. the coolest cool. name ever. <laughs> I'm gonna name a dog that. <laughs> no, apparently it's it's a it's a folk uh, it's like a folk tale, an old school folk tale, like a, oh, a oh. cautionary tale, you know, for the dangers of having sex no, with strange that, women. Every folk tale, every stereotype has something based in reality. A the boogeyman, nice. I guarantee the boogeyman is based on you know some psycho that was hiding in a kid's closet and killed him. All that shit is real, one way or another. So you're saying there might actually be a vagina with teeth? Yeah, that happened. <laughs> that happened. I, I don't think it's a, a, a vagina with teeth now, but that movie was messed up. <laughs> like it like took off like like one of the gynecologist's hands, and he didn't want to tell people how he lost it. <laughs> um, I would be telling everyone. I'd be on the front of freaking TMZ.com <laughs> with that type of news, dude. Of course, he ate my hand. <laughs> no, but um, sort of related story. I remember on the History Channel, they, um, I think it was a thing about self-defense weapons or weapons or knives, whatever it was about. But there was this product, um, I want to say it was in the 40s, 50s. It was an anti-rape product. And basically what it was, it was something that a woman could insert into her vagina. And it was uh, basically a trap. Rape acts. They still sell yeah, those. Rape acts. Reading if, about it right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, if you tried to have sex with her, this thing would – it was razor blades and or something, and it would, like, clamp onto your dick. Yeah, they have those now. It's and, like a, a female condom, and um, they're selling them or giving them away in Africa, actually, as a deterrent to rape where it's rampant. That's uh, That's got to be the worst thing that could happen to me ever. <laughs> Well, then you know you shouldn't be raping girls. You know no at girls. some point some chick's going to be, like, going to find her boyfriend cheated on her, and she's going to and she's gonna do that to him. Oh man, I can see it oh, now. You're right. You're right. I, I would. How do you? You got to stereotype those women too. You like look at her. She's pounding those drinks like she don't care. She got her rape axe on today. <laughs> <laughs> and like, what if? Oh no. And like, and like, oh, what if the oh. chick has? Imagine this scenario. Imagine if the chick has it in. She gets drunk and she goes home with you and she forgets she has it in. Well, all the more reason to eat it before you stick it. <laughs> all right, that's just why you put, you put the fingers in first. You put the fingers. <laughs> Now you're gonna lose your tongue wings. Have a nice day. <laughs> you're gonna sound like White Boy Seven Street doing commentary now. <laughs> oh, oh man, I had a joke to go along with it. Oh, I was man. gonna be like, Kyle, you never been in a pie eating contest? Oh my! Oh, all right, all right, God. all right. Did anyone else have topics prepared? Um, Bash, what kind of grades did you get in high school? <laughs> Um, high school was cool for me. I was always all right in high school. Like I did good in my first three years and we had four years of high school. <clears throat> and, and, um, in my last year, I just, I did so horribly bad. I don't know why I just got distracted and didn't pay as much attention as I should have. But, um, 
I went to summer school. I, like my last year, my last semester was the only class that I ever failed. Summer so school. I wasn't going to graduate. I'm familiar with the concept. <laughs> so I had to hit up summer school and uh, I got lucky. I got a good grade and um, I ended up getting into university after all. So nice. That I went to up. summer school and I was there with, uh, if, if any guys are from the Philadelphia area, I went with Tug McGraw's daughter. She and I were nice. in this English class. And, uh, took summer Who's school. Tug McGraw? Tug McGraw oh. is a um, Hall of Fame pitcher. He played for the Phillies. Was he a pitcher? Does I have that right? Yeah. yeah. I want to say he was. Yep. Yeah, he was He was a relief pitcher, apparently. Guy was a gangster. Relief? All right. Closers? Uh, and this is, he, he wasn't, I don't think he was a closer, but closers in baseball have a mindset. And this is completely off topic. Have a, I just want to say this, though. They have a mindset and a mentality and a skill set that no other sport really calls for. And, and uh, those are some of my favorite athletes. Close, closers in baseball are my favorite. When John Smoltz was closing for the Braves, he was untouchable. And then I remember I, I remember the fucking All-Star game. They put in that fucking bitch Gagne from – who did Eric Gagne play close for? Dodgers. Dodgers. They put him in instead of fucking Smoltz and National League lost again. No, I was God, so Gagne, Gagne had broke the record that year, though. I remember that. Gagne was on steroids. Smoltz is a gangster. Smoltz is, is going to play pro fucking golf. He he, he golfs with, with Tiger Woods and kicks his ass. Smoltz is a monster, and they put him and they put Gagne, that fat fuck Gagne, in. I got a question, though. I'm not a big sports fan, but I, I, I followed baseball when I was a kid, so I know about Smoltz because I lived out here in the, toward the Atlanta area, and, you know, Braves are a big thing. Why does Smoltz go from a starter, which he was an all-star starting pitcher, to a closer? How does right, that me, transition happen? He, all right. Smoltz was uh, obviously Smoltz, Smoltz all-star starting pitcher. ERA, like, you know, always three or below. Guy was a gangster, and, he, and he, uh, he blew out his arm, and he had to have Tommy John surgery. So when he came back, they wanted to ease him into it. You know, you can't be throwing 100 pitches a game. He, uh, as a closer, you, you're going to pl- be throwing, like, 30 pitches tops. But you're but you're giving it all you got every single pitch, and that was a better rehab for him than being a starting pitcher. So he is the he is he is the only pitcher who has ever made that tran- made the transition from starter starter to closer and back to starter and been successful the whole way. That yeah. guy is uh, my favorite athlete of all time, and he is a he is a awesome guy. I've met him. He does charity work all the time. He does like local radio. And like I said, it's not just he's not just a baseball athlete. Like that guy golfs with uh, Woods, and I think he's going to start on. It's not the pro tour, but it's uh, it's some like a level below. It's like a senior tour or something. And uh, I mean, he's he's amazing. I love that guy. Yeah, Smoltz, Smoltz has had some competition too. He had Maddox and Glavin. That that'll never happen again. There will never be a team like the 1995. I want to say it was was it 94 or 95? 94, I believe. Uh, when they were won the World Series, it was even ninety four, ninety five. I should I should know that, but what they had small. The ninety five Rays had Mark Wollers too. Whatever the fuck happened to him? He had like a hundred eight mile an hour fastball. One hundred two, and he. Uh, all right, remember he remember when they they played the Yankees in the World Series that year, and he uh, he he said all this stuff about New York he shouldn't have said. I know his dad. His dad uh, was my mom's boss at one time. And uh, he was like, I can't believe he said that stupid shit. Now he's on every newspaper in the country for hating on New York. Because basically he said that, like, New York was full of freaks and they're in the subway. Uh, they're like, they're, he's, he's talking about homosexuals in the subways and mm-hmm. freaks and all these, like, messed up people that he was seeing and how he hates New York and stuff, like, as they're playing New York in the World Series. So probably wow. not a good idea because they're throwing, <laughs> they're throwing D-cell batteries at you when you storm onto the field then, buddy. Oh, I just want to throw out there. It turns out Tug McGraw didn't actually make the Hall of Fame. He was a beast, but not a Hall of Famer. So I think I just saved myself like 25,000 personal messages. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not too much of a baseball fan myself. The last thing I really remember about baseball is the Toronto Blue Jays winning in 92 and 93. Yeah. Oh, I remember and that. And that when Joe Carter went uh went to the tri- the triple deck. Did they beat the Phillies? Yeah. yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, the I, that's the only thing yeah, I remember Joe about Carter. '93 is Joe Carter hit like the sixth deck of the Sky Dome with a home run. Yeah, he he went off. That guy was like my hero. I had a T-shirt. I was like, what? How? I was like seven. I had a little T-shirt. I remember. I used to walk around with that shit every day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Joe Carter, man. Uh, I, I, see, I pull the names out my ass. And I only watch sports. Joe Carter, I'm the man. <laughs> you know, you, you know how I remember <laughs> Joe Carter. 
I used to I used to have like a Sega game that was based off the '93 era, World Series baseball. Yeah, I remember I had a game for Sega Saturn, and I was I would always play as the Braves. And uh, I remember Fred McGriff could hit a 500. I think I hit a 580 foot home run one time with that guy, gangster. He's so about you, at the time. This fall, which is going to be the bigger game, Halo or Black Ops? Black Ops. Black Ops for sure. Um, I'm not I digging. Think- I'm not digging Reach at all. I mean, I was I was watching a Nods Johnson video the other day, and he was doing. He went like a 20 and a three in Halo Team Slayer, mm-hmm. and I'm sitting there thinking, Notch is a good player. No credibility to him, but I'm on par with him, and I can't pull 20 and three on Reach. Why the fuck can't I pull 20 and three on Reach? <laughs> the um. Which whichever game is going to sell more is going to depend completely on advertising. If if uh, Bungie advertises like Activision did for Modern Warfare Two, they'll sell more. If uh, if Activision advertises Black Ops like they did Modern Warfare Two, they'll sell more. It, it's all about the advertising. That's all it is. I think Black Ops going to blow Reach out the water. As far as being a better game and a game that's going to appeal to the masses more, I think Black Ops is that game because Call of Duty in general is. I mean, is a big difference between a game where you can. I mean, let's face it. In any Call of Duty game, even even uh, even Call of Duty Two, which is considered the more uh, skill based game of all of them, I mean, you can pick pick up an MP44 and just spray from the hip, and if you get lucky, you're going to kill the guy in a couple bullets. Halo, Halo. I mean, stand there with your assault rifle and spray a guy all day. You're not going to get a kill unless you know what you're doing. You know how to strafe and you know how to put that grenade on him beforehand or that melee afterwards. This is not going to happen. You don't get kills in Halo unless you know what you're doing. Yeah, I think I think now especially like Call of Duty just seems to be the more like average Joe's game. Like I see a lot, I know a lot of guys who don't even take games seriously at all, but they all have all of my friends have Modern Warfare 2, you know. Not a lot of them really play Halo too much. It's just like like Kyle said, it takes a lot more know-how to play that. Call of Duty is more of a, you know, you can pick it up and you can play it right away. It's for uh, weekend warrior gamers. Yeah, but see like, like Yeah, exactly. Like Bash, you were all about Reach when it came out, but now you hate the game too. Yeah, I was. I was. I'm not gonna lie. The, the hype just just engulfed me, and I, when I played it, I was like, I suck at this game. Like, I'm just gonna be real with myself and tell myself the truth. I suck, and I have more fun playing Call of Duty. So, even though I have nothing against the game itself, it might be a good game, but for me, it's not for me. Like, I'm a Call of Duty player. I, I have maybe. trouble dealing with the grenades. Yeah. I don't like the reticle, the reticle bloom, and the. I don't know if somebody else had like if that was something Bungie named that or if, I heard Blame Truth say it last night. I don't know. I guess maybe that's the. Uh, I read it online too. It's widely known. Okay, that's that's what he called it, and I I was like, oh, that's perfect name for that. I guess that's that's what it's called. But I don't like that. All right, I, I just don't. The, in in case you guys don't know, basically you've got a the reticle. You've got like a, a, a circle that you put that that's where your bullet's going to go, and every time you shoot, that circle expands to about five times its normal size, and then it shrinks back down pretty much instantly. And that's to prevent you from, from firing rapidly with, like, the DMR. It, it makes it so that the shots aren't, are, like, one-fifth as accurate if you rapid fire. Versus it adds take one more time. piece to the skill, right? You, you can't just get on target and mm-hmm. get, like, three hits. Every single hit needs to be re-aimed. Yeah, but see, yeah. you're saying the skill. I'm looking at it this way. It makes it easier to stay alive for the other player. That's true. And, you know, like it, it wasn't until these guys made the argument that the entire Halo community is more skilled than Call of Duty that anything made sense because they say, oh, in Halo it's so hard to kill people. Yeah, well, it's so hard to die, right? It, it's all even. <laughs> it, to me, the big difference – well, I was going to say the big difference is that um, how much time you've invested in the game. There are people who – Halo has been, like, top three game for the last couple of years now. So there are guys who never left it. When Halo came, when Halo Three came out, they just kept playing and playing and playing and playing. And I think that these are guys who, well, you know, some of them are just going to like Halo better, and some of them probably came into Call of Duty, <coughs> excuse me, and um, didn't want to like invest the time that it takes to be above average Call of Duty player. They're like, you know, I like kicking butt in Halo, and that's that. And we're kind of in the opposite spot. We're in Call, of, we're we're doing pretty well in Call of Duty, and then we come to Halo and we say, do I want to go through the three to six months of butt kicking that it takes to be you know a better than average player you know, to, be, to be a force yeah. in this game here's mm-hmm. and here's my thing and all right we're in the video the the gaming video making business i guess you could say so 
it's 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 in our best nature to make videos of games that are interesting to watch and that lend themselves to en- entertaining videos. And I don't think Halo is that kind of game. I watched Two Bucks the other day, and he had a great video on Machinima. I, I want to say he went twenty six and zero. I may be completely mm-hmm. wrong, but it was something like that on the Reach Beta. And I really I enjoyed his commentary. But and he did a gr- don't get me wrong, he did a great job of the gameplay. Like he's a great player at that game at, and, as well as Halo Three. But that. It, it's the game that wasn't entertaining, not his gameplay, if you know what I mean. Um, I just prefer watching Call of Duty. I don't think that game's a very exciting game unless you're get Montages in Halo are really cool. Why, why do you think Halo's gameplay. not exciting to watch? Like, what is it about Because it's, so, it's slow-paced, and it's like yeah. you really can't just own face like like you can in, in, uh, in Call of Duty. You, like, in Call of Duty, you can run into a room, and you can... T- I saw a video uh, the other night. It was like a little highlight video from COD 4. The guy got a 10-man spray with an RPD. Now, obviously, it's just you know luck and a fluke, and he'll he'll never do that again. But at that's least bad. it's not a good Look. strategy. Yeah, yeah. And, you yeah. know, I'm all cool about playing a slow paced game. And I just can't stand putting four shots into a guy with the B, with the DMR. His shields drop, and he runs away. I try to catch him running away, but the reticle's going everywhere. You know, it's a four shot headshot, right? I realized that the other night. Yeah, uh, three shots take the shields down. The fourth one, you got to get the head. But usually, after they take two good hits, they're running. If they're not, if they're not like right on top of you, I want to no. I want to say off by one. It's four to the yeah. body, one to the head. Yeah, that's that's the deal. It's four to the body and then one to the head, or four to the head. Yeah, but if you ever try connecting five shots with that with that weapon, which has like what twelve rounds, you can connect yeah. five shots across map and hope they don't get away from you. Or, or better yet, if you're not in pro mode. Which I, I, I have a strong preference for pro. I like it a lot more. But if I'm not in it, I play with the pistol most of the time. And you have to hit five times and you have like seven bullets. And that's yeah. a challenge too. And I don't really care for that game too much. Um, I don't know. I mean, y'all, yeah, see, I y'all play with me. I get like 17 assists a freaking game. It's because <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a kind of like, I'm a support player when I'm playing first versus shooters. I like to pick a, a weapon that has high marksmanship value. And just pick people off. By the way, I learned what an assist is in Halo. So, as you know, an assist in Modern Warfare means you know you got to pull it on them. You don't get an assist in Halo unless you did forty percent of the damage. So, if you're getting seventeen assists, you're doing more than like getting one bullet on guys as they're running by. You're yeah, I'm, I'm tearing them up. I'm putting them. I'm just, putting them in the fucking yeah. in the crypt. It didn't but they happen. get away from me, and the, they were shields regen. The, the night I played with you, I wasn't getting the same thing. But that's typical of me too. You know, if I get eight kills i often get like between 12 and 16 assists and then i look at my teammates and they're not getting that they're finishing players and i'm like wow what are they doing that's so different yeah, than me how are they getting are they that doing? finish and it, they might just be hitting their headshots a little better they might be um you know playing in a different style that leads them to get cleanups while i get uh, initial engagements you know catch them in the center or something i don't know it was see, um, see me i'm thinking right, right now I'm thinking, I want to play some Reach, because I want to see if I slow my shots down, will I be more successful? The thing about Reach that keeps me going back to it is I'm not good at it. And when I'm not good at something, and I know I can be good at it, I want to figure it out. <laughs> if you kind of get catch my drift. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I um forgot what I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't think about it, and they'll come to you. Yep. Is that how that works? <laughs> Hey, you I know mean, what? I've asked uh, most of the guys. Cal, what kind of grades did you get in high school? Um, I told you last time it was really bad. I didn't. Pay uh, really bad grades, but really bad grades, but really great test scores. Oh, that's right. I, I remember that. Didn't you bust out with a fourteen something on the SAT? Yeah, fourteen twenty five. Yeah. See, I got old school SAT scores. I wonder where they rank. Yeah, mine was too. Mine was before the uh, the essay. I uh, see. Y'all, y'all talking about this? I'm I'm sort of thinking. The grenades need to only take shields. <laughs> Did you use a calculator? We weren't allowed calculators in school. No, they, they gave the us, they gave, Yeah, they gave us a piece of scrap paper. That's all we got. Oh, that reminds me of something I wanted to say earlier. You're talking about summer school. I had summer school one time, and uh, I was in there because I didn't pay attention in algebra. And I got stuck in there with these retards. The other kids in the – like, I, I felt so ashamed to be in there because of the people that I was grouped with. There was this group of guys. I was a, I was a, I was like a freshman at the time, and these guys were all like 18 years old, and they weren't. Their the math level that they were in was so low they weren't allowed calculators. 
<laughs> so they because were in the tax it was basic class. math. It was basic mathematics. So they weren't <laughs> allowed to calculate calculus. your tax at the supermarket. And I'm yeah, I'm over there doing algebra, so I've got a scientific calculator. And they're like, "Yo, man, let me get that calculator." Like, no, nah, dude, no, you're not allowed a calculator. And occasionally, one of them would like sneak <laughs> one. And he he would like be so sneaky over there with his calculator. Like, yeah, dude, like times, you're only hurting yourself, dog. Four. Ten times four. I'm like. <laughs> Dude, are you fucking kidding me right now? <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. I, I could never be like, you'd be a good teacher, good history. I couldn't deal with this kid like that. I'd be like, dude, you're only hurting yourself. Why the hell are you grabbing that calculator? You know, when somebody cheats you out your check at work and you can't figure out that you earned this amount of money, what the fuck are you going to do? You're going to go hungry. You know? <laughs> I mean, if, if there's anybody out there listening to this and you don't know what 10 times 4 is, Fucking kill yourself because you're gonna have a hard life. You might as well. I have hey. a feeling there's gonna be a lot of a lot of people. See, you should be telling that, cow. Everybody should get in the beta. No, oh my God. <laughs> I, I'm not even kidding. If you're out there and you don't know what ten times four is, please unsubscribe from about, Weeks of Redemption. Because yeah, I and I'm not talking are. about. I'm not talking about. You got to be like, let's see, ten one times four plus two zeros. Okay, yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> if you didn't know immediately that it was forty. Kill yourself. <laughs> Kyle, Hang yourself person. to the skylight. <laughs> Kyle, you're a bad person. I'm just saying, if you don't know what 10 times 4 is, your, your life is worthless. You are no – you're not going to contribute anything to society. I'm just going to end up paying for your welfare with my taxes. That's where this Look, is going. I'm well, going to say, some of those if people. you don't know what 10 times 4 is, kill the bad man who doesn't like you. Wow. <laughs> I don't, I don't. Careful, he's on. You know, you know – Kyle, you should go ahead and uh, give them advice on how Woody could have successfully hung himself. Because if they don't know what 10 times 4 is, they're not going to be able to problem solve it. Yeah. Oh, and, and by the way, guys, the best way to kill yourself, I mean, I mean, I, I, I'll never understand saying, like, I, all right, there's suicide attempts that are like cries for help and attention seeking. But there are legitimately people who can't kill themselves. And I'm like, you are the, you are the epitome of failure. Like, how? No, no. Just kill yourself. Just do it. Jump in front of a car. Dead. Tie a cinder block to your foot and jump in the pool. Dead. Okay, okay. So wait a minute. Jumping in front of a that's car, a way to that's go. not a guaranteed death. I'm talking about a big car. I'm talking about a semi-truck. Jump from a high yeah. story. That's really easy. If you can't do that. That's not If a, you can't do that. Yeah, if I'll, you have access to a tall enough building, you'd think that would lock it in. Although, not necessarily. The, the surefire way, I think, is firearms. But not everyone has access. Yeah, I've seen people fail at that too, and they're like, "Yeah, there's a guy, there's a guy in my town who walk. I, you see him walking around sometimes, and like half of his face is gone because he failed at shooting himself in the head." Really? And yeah. he's allowed to walk around in the city. Well, I, I, what are you gonna do? I think the surefire walk way, <laughs> the surefire way, is get you a bottle of bleach and you drink that shit. You could throw up. See, I, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Somebody's and, gonna come catch you and just induce, you know, some some throw up. If you want, uh, a if, quick, if, if you take death, a big I'm enough swig, I'm liking the building idea. Yeah, but see, most most people who die from buildings actually die from the heart attack on the way down. I don't and believe if, that. That that's I mean, not true. Heart attacks you, take a while. And if you're a light guy, if you're like you know a ninety pound guy, <laughs> you, might you might just float. You might just float. What, when you're when you fall at that level, you fall at what 139 miles an hour or something like that. 150. 150. But the fact is, you hit twice when you fall like that. And if you don't have the body mass to crush the bones, you will survive. I don't, I don't know about that. that. I know the terminal <laughs> velocity. Yeah, that's that, not that, true. That terminal. In that World is... War II, people like World War II and during the Battle of Omaha, these these guys they would they would go and they, they, their gliders would be too low for their parachutes to deploy. And they survived, I think it was like a 900-foot fall because they were so damn light. They dropped their packs, and they hit. So what happens is your your bones hit first, and then the frame of your body hits second, like almost immediately afterwards. And the, the body's weight and mass crushes the bone. That's, how, that's what the crushing impact comes from because yeah. it's two separate entities. I'm, not, I'm saying that, uh, you know, based on all the, the medical knowledge I picked up by watching ER in Chicago Hope, <laughs> that that's not what kills people. I'm gonna say that it's the bang on the, the brain damage they get when their head hits the ground. That that's probably the principal. Yeah, thing but that you, kills people. You, you could fall from long distance and not hit your head if you fall right. Well, we're going for mm. suicide here, right? 
Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing a nosedive. <laughs> yeah, but we're talking about people who can't do 10 times 4. They're not going to think about the nosedive. They're going to walk <laughs> over the edge. <laughs> They're going to probably go feet first and break their legs and shit. Oh, man. Yeah, but if you fall hard enough, your body might just go into shock and you might just die from that. So, What would be the surefire way of dying? Get somebody else to do it for you right there. Ooh, yeah, just get someone to chop your head off, right? That'd be that really the only the way. I'm... Yeah, no one <laughs> sure survives that. Here's my here's my insurance money. You're my you're my beneficiary. Kill my ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're at one hour. Does anyone have any closing thoughts better than that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if uh, if you don't know what Tim Times Four is, please go ahead and unsubscribe from my channel because I know some of you don't. <laughs> This you is can Corbis. subscribe to mine if you don't want to. If you don't want to subscribe to his, I don't mind. You know? Subscribe to yeah. Bash. Bash doesn't mind having lit- literally retarded people subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> I might. I might win when I hit your guys' level, but when I'm at four thousand, they, 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 they be like, Bash, what does your girlfriend's favorite commentator mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Hey, Bash, you did a good job. Appreciate you. Uh, speaking well, thank up. you. Yep. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. And uh, next week, I'll try and pick a, a happy story. At- I actually got – let me go ahead and say this before we close this out. Mm-hmm. I actually did have Brad Jones for this week, which is the cinema snob, and he messaged me halfway through the podcast saying he had just got home and he forgot completely about it, and he, he has a lock-in for next week. So if you guys are looking for the cinema snob, he will be on here next week. I know I'm excited for it, but it's been Painkiller already, episode four. Please leave your thoughts, your your comments, your rates, and all your you know your blessings. Send them over to Woody because I don't <laughs> want to hear them. <laughs> all right. Send me money. Kyle <laughs> right. wants money. And Bash wants subscribers. Have a good week, guys. <laughs> Have a good week. <laughs> Later. Take care, y'all. I hit stop.